In this video, we're going to be taking the derivative of g of x, and you can see here that we have a constant, and then we have a couple of rational terms going on here, fractions. Um, to do so, we're going to strategically rewrite it so that we're allowed to use what we refer to as the power rule for taking derivatives. So the power rule says your x, your variable is raised to an exponent, that's just a constant, it's going to come down in front, and you reduce the exponent by one. So one of the keys to be able to approach this one without bringing out the quotient rule is strategically rewriting this using our exponent rules. So we can rewrite it, bring it along the four, but then you'll notice that we have x to the first power down in the denominator. If we want to move that up to the numerator, we can rewrite it using a negative exponent. The same thing can be done with our last term there. We have four over x squared. To bring that x squared up to the numerator, we can make it a negative exponent, and that accomplishes what we want. Now to take the derivative, we'll deal with these one term at a time um, using the power rule as we go. Now the derivative of a constant is always gonna be zero. So the derivative of four is zero. Looking at that next term, we have three x to the negative first power. The constant can come along, and then we can focus on taking the derivative of x to the negative first power. By the power rule, we can bring the exponent down and then reduce the exponent by one. So initially that's gonna be negative one minus one more. Moving on to the four x squared, the four can come along and then x to the negative second power, we can say the negative two comes down, reduce the exponent by one. So negative two minus one more. I'm trying to show all my work right now uh, as to not lose anyone as we're doing these computations, taking the derivative. All right, next up, let's clean this up a little bit. So we have three times negative one, and I'm dropping the zero because adding the zero doesn't add to our derivative. So three times negative one makes negative three. X to the negative one minus one makes negative two. Four times negative two makes negative eight. X to the negative two minus one more makes negative three. Um, typically it's okay to leave our answers with negative exponents. That is gonna represent the derivative. We could, however, rewrite this with positive exponents if we so chose. All we'd have to do is say, well, the negative three stays up in the numerator, move the x to the negative second down, we'll make it a positive exponent, minus eight over x to the positive third power. Um, if you're asked to evaluate this at a given value of x, what we would wanna do next is actually plug in that value of x. So we'd say negative three times four to the negative second power, minus eight times four to the negative third power. And I would probably use this if I were allowed a calculator um, that we could just punch all of this into our calculator and go ahead and get a decimal coming out here, negative 0 0.3125. If however, we're not allowed to use a calculator, it may be easier for us to get to a fractional answer by going over to the second version of this with positive exponents. So moving over to the negative three over x squared minus eight over x cubed and plugging our four in there. That would give us negative three over four squared minus eight over four cubed. Then reducing down, we would get negative three over 16 minus eight over 64. In that second fraction, I believe those are both multiples of four. So we could reduce down saying negative three over 16 minus um, two over 16. With a common denominator, we could combine these together and get negative five over 16, which is equivalent to our negative 0 0.3125. All right, next, let's move over to taking the second derivative. So to do so, what I'm gonna do is use this version of my first derivative with the negative exponents. So taking that second derivative, again, you bring the constant along, the negative three from our first term, and focus on taking the derivative of x to the negative second power. So negative two comes down, reduce that exponent by one, negative two minus one more makes negative three. Bring the minus eight along from our second term, take the derivative of x to the negative third. So the negative three comes down, reduce the exponent by one. So negative three minus one more makes negative four. Uh, we can clean this up a little bit by saying, well, negative three times negative two makes positive six x to the negative third, negative eight times negative four, uh, three makes positive 24, x to the negative fourth power. Or you can make this into fractions again by saying, well, that's six over x to the positive third power plus 24 over x to the positive fourth power. 
Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, as we already did the first derivative, is what that can tell us about the graph. The first derivative turned out, after we plugged in a four, it turned out being negative. So whenever our first derivative, when you evaluate it at a particular number and it turns out negative, what that means is the graph is decreasing at an x value of four. Now let's evaluate our second derivative at four and talk about what that means about our graph. So again, you kind of have two different versions here. You could plug into the one with negative exponents. So that'd be six times four to the negative third power plus 24 times four to the negative fourth power. And if you're allowed your calculator, you can just punch it in. We get 0 0.1875, 0 0.1875. Or if you're reliant on getting a, an exact fraction to go along with this, I would use the second version with the positive exponents. And in that case, we'd say six over four to the third power plus 24 over four to the fourth power. So six over 64 plus 24 over 256. And I believe these will reduce down some uh, to get a common denominator that, um, what's the best way to reduce this down? I guess six over 64, those are both multiples of two. So we could say three over 32. And with 24 over 256, um, those are also gonna get us down to 32. I believe that also reduces down um, eight times 258, 256 divided by eight, would be 32 as well. And three times 24, uh, three times eight makes 24. So reduce those down. You can do it as they're both multiples of two, systematically getting all the way down there if you'd like. But I think we get three 30 seconds plus three more 30 seconds, which is six 30 seconds or three sixteenths. Um, 3 sixteenths is equivalent to that 0 0.1875. All right, so to finish this up, notice we took the second derivative and then we evaluated this at a value of four. So at an X value of four, it turned out being positive in our second derivative. Because that's positive for our second derivative, what that tells us about the graph is it is concave up. Now, if that had been a negative, uh, as we evaluated at four for our second derivative, it would be a concave down for our graph. All right, hope this helps, kind of an involved problem, but good luck.